What's going on guys? We are here with James Krieger and he's just finished his presentation on the science of size and we're going to talk to him a little bit about that and some of the key points uh, from his presentation. So firstly James, um, one thing I'm sure a lot of uh, the attendees would have seen uh, was that hypertrophy is dose dependent and the response to really high volumes in terms of number of sets per week um, probably exceeded what many of them would have thought. Yeah. So do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so if you look at all the available research so far, uh, the data shows pretty strongly, and more data is going to be coming out on this, that um, volume uh, is a driver of hypertrophy. And the more that you do, the more hypertrophy you get. All the way up even to weekly set volumes higher than a lot of people would expect. I mean, we're talking you know, 30, 40 weekly set volumes. Uh, will actually even give you better results than 20 weekly set volumes. It's it's pretty phenomenal, and, and in fact, you'll probably, you know, when you double your number of sets, you'll get about 50% more hypertrophy, yeah. you know, for every time you double your sets. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty strong relationship. Yeah, the correlation is definitely there. And I guess one of the other things that you discussed was the role of frequency, mm -hmm. and the way that I see frequency is more uh, a tool to organize your volume yeah. throughout the yeah. training week. Um, so you presented some slides and the data that was showing not a lot of difference between uh, training muscle once a week versus multiple times upwards of you know four to six times a week. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about that and I guess some of the practical considerations in terms of which side of the frequency spectrum you sit? Yeah, so uh, if you equate weekly volume so whether it's you know two sets or, or five sets twice a week or ten sets once a week, you know or you know, three sets three times a week, that's close to ten. Um, overall, the research shows at least over eight to twelve week periods, there's very little, if any, difference in hypertrophy as long as you equate for the volume. Yeah. Uh, now that said, you had just mentioned what that indicates though is that there's really no. There's not an ideal frequency. Rather, you have to look at your weekly volume and just really look at it for yourself. How can I split up my weekly volume where I feel like I get the best quality work yeah. done? Really, yeah. is is how you can do it, and 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 it also gives you a lot of flexibility. If you're a person who really likes bro splits and yeah. you train, you feel like you can train the best with bro splits and do a bro split. I mean, yeah, definitely give you know, rise to more flexibility. Yeah, um, in terms of how volume is distributed yeah. um, and some other discussions were around you know, sub-maximal versus maximal effort um, and exertion load and how that yeah. would potentially influence the frequency that we train with. Um, and something else that you discussed was muscle damage and there were a few questions, Mike is totally even jumped in and asked questions uh, on this and you know we're starting to see that there's just a mixed um, you know, data in terms of whether or not it's um, you know, an important factor in hypertrophy and the role that it does play is quite confusing. So, I guess, do you want to explain, uh, you know, what your take is on muscle damage? Yeah. So, uh, there's, there's a big question mark around muscle damage. Some, um, some people have speculated that it plays a causal role in muscle growth, uh, but there's also emerging data suggesting that maybe it doesn't. Uh, it's not really clear. Uh, you know. My personal opinion is, I would say the weight of the evidence probably leans towards, if it does play a role in growth, it's probably fairly minor, uh, but we can't totally rule it out. Um, and so in my opinion, you know, whether it's causal or not, I don't think people need to be chasing muscle damage or chasing soreness or anything like that. Don't, don't use soreness as an in indicator that you had a good it's workout. very poor proxy. Yeah. Yeah. How, yeah. how do you differentiate you know, a good workout yeah. based on how slow you are? Yeah, for sure. And something that you also talked about, and I saw you uh, put into practice in the flesh at JPS, was uh, the Maya reps, rest pause sets, yeah. um, and the utility of those as a, a training tool um, to you know accrue effective reps and effective training stimulus. And it's something that we actually do with our clients at JPS. Many of them who are gen pop, yeah, don't have a lot of time to train. Um, take it away. What, what's the deal with Maya reps and rest pause? Yeah, so. Um Unfortunately, there's not a lot of research on it, but there's, at least of the data that is available, suggests that if you do rest-pause training, um, you can, you're basically using fatigue to your advantage to increase muscle fiber recruitment and uh, get more, like as you said, effective reps. And I mean, 
you're not going to get more hypertrophy with a rest pause training, but what it will allow you to do is sometimes get more effective volume in a smaller period of time. It's more time efficient. And so, uh, and it's also useful if you're a person who's you know dealing with injury or something like that, where you need to limit your total repetitions on a certain joint, um, but still get some effective training. And you know things like rest pause can, yep. can be really useful for that. I guess big caveat with that is the type of exercise yeah. that you would use. And yes. Obviously, how frequently and how long you use those kind of techniques. Well, you yeah. mentioned that you used it for a month or so. Yeah, yeah I was there. doing. I was doing straight out every set to failure. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, with every exercise, and I was able to do that. And at first, you know, because your training volume was not super high. Um, but I found, yeah, after about a month or so, I was just like getting to the point where I was, I was starting to like almost dread some of my workouts uh, because it's it was like, and, and just because when you're training an absolute failure, that last rep, you're just grinding and you're too, and with a, and if you're doing that with rest pause, you're doing that like six times in a row in, in rapid succession, yeah. essentially, you know, and it's just like. Um, after a while, it's just like it's it's exhausting. I'm tired thinking about it, <laughs> but it's very effective for fathers like you and I yeah. who might not have as much time yep. to get in and get out, yeah. get home to change nappies and do yeah. all those. Yeah. Things. Well, you're past that now. I'm still, yeah, yeah. still going through that. But no, James, <laughs> thank you very much, man. Thanks for having me. Awesome Thanks for having me. And guys, make sure you check out James over at Weightology.net. He's got some brilliant uh, research reviews, mini webinars articles, videos, the works, and if you're into science, getting jacked and body metamorphosis, <laughs> follow James. Yeah.